Hello, everybody. It's Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. It's author Laurie McDowell. She's part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast under The Advisor. And she's here today. And I'm very excited to have her. She's going to talk about how to reset your mindset. So she's going to give us some great advice on how we can actually reinvent our minds, that set, and really become the people we want to become. And today we have Lori here. She's going to tell you some great tools, tips, advice, and she's going to really set you on your way so you really can see the world in a whole different light and really accomplish your dreams and make them your realities uh, uh, um, really possible. So Lori, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Stacey Menton. I'm Lori McDowell, and I am an author. I'm an author of the book, The Reinvention Mindset, and as well as co-author of a couple other books. I also am a speaker and a life and mindset coach. I like to call myself the reinvention coach because I help people get their mindset in a place where they can reinvent their life and create the life they truly most desire or the life where they, they get the most joy and fulfillment from. I love that. You know, so many people, um, you know, they want to change the way they think and they want to look at life differently, but they just don't know where to begin. You know, for people who are listening that really want to, they want something better, but they don't know how to go about it. You know, what's your advice? And, you know, when you're trying to really change yourself, you know, how do we do that? Yeah, I think the biggest advice I have, the first thing when you're trying to change yourself is to really go through a process mm -hmm. of of self-discovery. And you have to ask yourself a lot of questions. The first question you really want to talk, figure out is like, what is your why? What is it that you're passionate about? What is it that would make you the most, the happiest person, you know, the most gives you the most joy? What, what do you really want to do? What, what motivates you? And once you know your why, then you can look at, you know, where, where do you want to go? What, what are the goals? What are the eight things that will fulfill that why? Because if we are fulfilling our why, then anything we do that fulfills that why will we'll make us fulfilled, will make us satisfied, and we will do it so much better if we know where we're coming from. And the other important thing is to look at what's holding us back. And it could be, it could be ourselves, it could be you know, our own limiting beliefs, our own limiting decisions, our mindset. Quite often, it's our fears. We're afraid of so many things, and, and we'll talk about fear in a little bit. And, and sometimes it's other people. It's it's our expectations. It's that we feel like there was something we're supposed to do. You know, we we went to college and we got this degree, and now we have to work in that area. Or you know, we are supposed to buy a house in the suburbs and drive a nice car and have two point two kids or something. So it's all. Some, you know, and sometimes it's the people around us that hold us back because they expect things of us and they're not really what, what we want to do, but we do them because they're expected. So by figuring out what your whys are, where you want to go and what's holding your back, then you can actually get started on that journey to reinvent yourself and, and live the life that really gives you the most joy. I love that. You know, you know I, I think it's so important because even in today's society, like you mentioned something really important is like we grew up in an environment and our whole lives were from, from childhood and on, we're told what to do. We're told that we need to do this. We need to do that. We need to do this. You know, we, we, if our parents are religious, you know, they, they dominated us into this religion and we go to church and this and that, and, and you grow up with a, a certain regiment your whole life. And then you think to yourself, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. And then, you know, as, and sometimes it's not really what you want to do when you do like a deep discovery in yourself, you know, you wonder sometimes why you're not happy. Well, it's, it, you know, a lot of it can be because you're not really being the person you were meant to be, I think. Yeah, that, that's so true. I mean, we, we end up, you know, ever since we're, when we're kids, we're told, you know, we're told be seen, not heard. We're told to keep quiet. We're told get good grades. And no one ever asks you, you know, like, what is it that really makes you happy? And then we keep going through life, and especially people who are people who are high achievers in, in the corporate world, they they do well, they get promotions, they get a great salary, and they're doing this work, and they they never really stop and say, is this really what I want to do, or am I really happy, or is this you know, everybody sees how you, on paper you look so successful, but yet inside you feel like 
you know, what am I doing? Why am I here? And I, I didn't ask myself that question until I was 60, almost 60 years old. And then it was like, you know, I'm, I've been doing this and it, and it hasn't been horrible. I, I, I never hated my job. I never hated my life. Yet it wasn't what lit me up. It wasn't what I jumped out of bed happy to do. And it wasn't what, you know, when I think back to when I was a, you know, a teenager or just in my 20s, what I wanted to do, I wanted to make a difference in the world. I wanted to help people. I, I had all these big hopes and dreams. And then you get in this rut where you're doing what you're supposed to and you're making money and you're getting, you know, promotions and you're getting, you're doing well, but you're never thinking, okay, is this making me happy? Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because I've had so many people that I've spoken to and, and clients too, that worked in the corporate world and they just were not happy and they left. And a lot of them left in their fifties and they realized that, you know what, I've been doing this for so long, but this is not who I am. This is not what I want to be. This is not, this is not making me the person that, you know, I always dreamt of becoming. I, I feel empty inside. I, I feel like I, I'm not at the place where I should be. And I hear that so many times. And, you know, it, it sometimes it is so, it's so needed to do some type of self-discovery, you know, on ourselves. And, you know, what are some of the steps that people maybe can do at home to get them on that, that way? Maybe, you know, to start learning and understanding who they are and what their needs are and, and, and what they really want from life. Yeah, I guess one of the things um, that I think everyone could do or should do is just, you know, get a piece of paper one day and write down like, you know, what are the, what, what is it that you're doing when you're the happiest? And it could, you know, it could be something like gardening. It could be watching your kids or grandkids. It could be your job. It could be when you're at work, you're the happiest. That's, you know, it could be, you know, but look at what those things are just so you know when you're the happiest, when you're the most fulfilled. And the other thing I think is really important is to look at what we fear and look at where our fears come from. Because mm -hmm. often what stops us from doing, you know, sometimes we do know what we'd like to do, or we, we do know we'd like to do something different. You know, maybe we don't know what, but we know we want to change. But the fear is really stopping us from changing. So it's a good idea to look at your fears. Um, I have an exercise that I like to tell people to do where you, you write down all the things you fear. And it could be, you know, fear of success, fear of failure, fear of, you know, fear of heights, fear of... <laughs> You know, fear that you're an imposter syndrome, fear of losing all your money. I mean, you have all these fears and then you go next to them and you look right on a scale of one to 10, you know, what's the likelihood of this happening? With one being, it's probably yeah. not going to happen. And with 10 being, there's, you know, it's going to definitely happen. And yeah. after you do that, most people, if you look at your list, most of the numbers are going to be less than five. <laughs> you know, they're, yeah. they're very low. Um, but the things we fear are very often very unlikely to happen. And then take the ones that are the highest, you know, if you have anything above five, maybe look at those or look at the couple that have the highest numbers and ask yourself the question, okay, if this happened, what would I do about it? And when right. you do that, you realize that, okay, even if this fear that this thing that I'm fearing happens, I can handle it. I can be creative. I could figure something out. And it, it's really not that bad. And yet, if you ask yourself, okay, if I get over this fear, what's the best that can happen? That's so right. much better. I mean, asking yourself, not, you know, not what the worst is going to happen, but what's the best that can happen if I do this thing I fear? Yeah. And that really brings you to say, okay, it's, you know, it's worth trying because even if I don't make it, it's not that bad. And I've learned something and I can try again. Cause we are the one thing like, you know, reinvention mindset when I wrote the book and interviewed people, we're so resilient. Yeah. We can all learn, you know, there are no failures. There's just, just learning and humans can recover from anything really. I mean, if we just set our mind to it, we can, we can overcome everything and we can, you know, some of the people that have the most horrible things happen to them are the happiest. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what happens to you. It's how you handle it and what you do after that. Oh, so true. And even if you look in your past, I'm sure there's everybody could look in their past about something traumatic happened in their lives. And then, and a lot of, a lot of people is, you know, we go through obstacles almost all the time, you know, and if you think about it and during the time that you go through your obstacles, 
it, life can be seem like it's so detrimental and stressful and chaotic and and you just don't know what to do but we always get through it we always get through it and you know and and if you're smart you'll look back and and maybe take something positive out of that negative that happened and and learn from it and grow from it you know but we always get through it you know and that's what people have to understand and, and kind of embed in their souls that we, we no matter what happens we always get through it Mm -hmm. Yes, that's so true. Yeah, I mean, we can, we really can get through everything. And, and I believe that, you know, if something happened to us, it's because we needed it at that time. Yeah. And that made us, you know, whatever happened in the past made you who you are today. Yeah. And at that time, you needed to go through that experience to learn from it, to grow, to get to where you are today. So everything that happened there, you know, it happened for a purpose and it brought you to where you are today. And we talked about, you talked about how people sometimes are in their fifties and sixties when they decide to change their life. And, and that's one of the things I like to tell, you know, people I work with or just want to speak is that it's never too late to reinvent yourself, to change oh, your yeah. mind, to, to get to a happy place. Because if you're going to, you know, if you have one more day on this earth, don't you want to make that the best day ever? Exactly. <laughs> but, but I mean, if you know, you know, you have one more day, make that the best day. If you have 10 more years, that's plenty of time. If you have another 50 years, we never know how long we're going to have. So we might as well start now. Yeah. And, you know, and starting doesn't always mean a major change. It's just, it's a change in your mindset where you decide you're in charge of your life and that yeah. you have choices and the choices are yours and you get to make them. And that's a, a total shift in the way we go through life most of the time. And it's funny you say that too, because, you know, I remember when I, I wanted to take speaking more seriously as a career and I took this year long course. I always did public speaking, all, you know, throughout my, my years, but I wanted to get better at it. And then I really wanted to make it a career and think, and I was thinking, I felt funny going into this class. I'm like, you know, what? I'm too old for this. What am I thinking? And I go into the class and everybody was my age or older. And there was no young people. There was, it was all our age group. And, and it was so funny to me because at first I was like a little insecure about going. I'm like, you know what? Why am I making a career change now? This is silly, you know? And then I go in there and everyone in, in the classroom is my age or older. And I was like, how funny is that? <laughs> That's so true. It's funny because I, I, I went to graduate school and got my PhD in chemical engineering. And, you know, I went when I was in my 20s. And yeah. there was a, a man, Bill was his name, who was getting his PhD. Bill was 72. Wow. Bill worked for his life. He worked, he retired. Him and his wife traveled the world for about five years old. And then he decided he wanted to get his PhD. And he he drove, he drove to class in a Corvette every day. And he <laughs> took, well, here's Bill. And, and, you know, Bill is older than almost all the professors, he's, he's, he was the, he'd come to the parties in, in school and he was just the coolest guy. And it was like, you know, that's just the way he didn't care that he was 72. He said, okay, I want to learn something new. I'm going to get my PhD. He was probably never going to work again, but, it, but he learned a lot of stuff and he wrote a thesis. You know, he was, I think it was about 75 or 76 when he wrote his thesis and graduated. Wow. That's amazing. That That's awesome. You know, and that goes back to reinventing your mindset. How powerful, like, you know, if you just change the way you think and then you practice, you know, the, your, the, the changes that you made, you could become probably a whole new person. Now you're an expert in this. So what's your intake about, you know, changing your mindset and then actually taking action? Yeah. I mean, I guess the first thing is changing what you believe and, and, and what you believe about yourself and what you believe about what's possible. Because once you believe something is possible, your, your unconscious mind can't really tell the difference between reality and, and, and what's fake. So yeah. if you imagine you believe it's possible and you imagine you see it happening and you, you say it's going to happen, then your brain believes it. it's already happened, really. I mean, it, it thinks it takes it as reality. So the yeah. first step is for you to believe it. And then the second step is you could really change the way people see you and the way they treat you. And that changes your reality because there have been there have actually scientific studies that our emotions, you know, our emotions are not just what be one person. Emotion, you can't have an emotion without having someone to receive the emotion. So emotions are transferred between people. And when 
your emotions actually trigger something in the other person's brain. It's called a motor neuron effect. So if I'm smiling and happy and I meet someone, that smiling and happiness in my brain is going to trigger those positive thoughts in their brain. So yeah. they're going to feel smile, they're going to feel happier, and then they're going to actually treat me better because I made them feel this way. So it changes their behaviors and all their behaviors towards me will be in a positive sense. So if you're feeling confident, if you're feeling like a leader and you're, you're putting that out there, other people's brains will pick it up and they'll treat you that way. And it can really change. You know, and so, I mean, if the whole world just woke up and smiled every day, probably all the wars would go away and all the, yeah. <laughs> pass that around it, and it would just make everything a happier place because we really do pass that on. So you're, because your brain just picks things up and doesn't know, you could, be, you could feel horrible inside, but if you're putting out that happy yeah. positive, that's what your brain, your unconscious mind sees, and that's what it passes to someone else. Right. You know, it's so true. And, and, and that's why they, they say a lot of times, you know, you, you put, surround yourself with the people you want to become, you know, like, because you, you really feed off of each other, you know, you, you become, who, you know, around the, you know, you become the people you surround yourself around and it's just automatically their energy affects you and you affect their energy and you feed off of each other. And that's why they say it's so important. Like really think about it. You know, if you really want to reinvent your mindset and you really want to become a better person or you want to become the person that you set your mind to be you have to really find those type of people and you know and maybe people who have even you know gone further you know to elevate to a higher level but they're on the same track as you with the same thoughts and then surround yourself around those people so you brush off on each other so what do you think that is that's so true and it's like so that's why so many of the you know a lot of the programs and the coaching programs that people take are I, I've paid, you know, joined coaching programs, not so much for the coaching, but just for the other people that were in the program, because it's worth the yeah. investment to get to know them and be the, around them because they're, they're successful, they're positive. And, and it's so true that the people around you, I mean, there's a quote, um, by, uh, Byron Tyree Henry, he's an actor. He, he has a quote that I heard him say one time that, you know, if, if the people around you are not supportive, uplifting, encouraging that you, you don't have a support, you know, a network, you actually have a cage and yeah. you want to make sure that the people around you are, are positive, that they have a high energy because then that attracts more people that way. And right. you, you become who you're, who you're with, you can pass that on. They become positive and it just lifts everybody up. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. For sure. You know, and, and I, I love the, the fact that you you encourage people to change their mindset because so many people get fixated in their ways or they think that, you know what, this is who I am and this is the way I'll be. And, I'm you know, and you know, I can't change. And or they, they're around people that tell them, oh, come on, you know, don't, you know, you can't change. You know, this is who you are, you know, but, you know, reinventing your mindset is it, it, is is it's it's a, it's something that anyone could do if they just learn how to do it the right way. Yeah, it really is something that anyone could do. There's like, there's no reason, you know, we can't all be, pos be positive, be happy, be, be someone who strives for things and makes the choice. It's, it's really about making a choice and choosing to be that way. And once you yeah. make that choice, then living with what that choice gives you. Because sometimes people say, okay, well, I chose to be a positive, but then they didn't do anything. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, once you make the choice, you still have to do the work. <laughs> it's right. not like you say, I choose to be a millionaire. It's my belief. <laughs> and I'm just going to sit here and wait for the money to fall on me. Right, right. <laughs> you can choose to have a successful business or to choose to be, you know, choose to be a famous actor, choose to be whatever it is you want. You still have yeah. to do the work. But when you do the work, the work is inspired, it's inspired action. It takes you in that direction and, and you open and the possibilities open up. So the first part is choosing. The second part is believing. And then the third part is doing what's going to bring you there. And that involves, you know, letting go of things that are holding you back, surrounding yourself by positive with positive people, um, asking for help taking if you need more training or education or to learn something new, getting those learnings, doing that action. 
Yeah. So you still have to do it, but once you make the choice and once you believe it, doing it becomes so much easier because it's got that purpose and that why behind it. And you really are, you know, you know where you want to go and you see it and you know it's possible. No, very true. So true. And when it comes to letting go, that's a hard thing for people. How do you how do you let go of the things that are holding you back? Like, you know, how do you come to realization and get out of that denial and and really look around and say, what's really holding me back? And then actually letting go. Because for some a lot of people, that letting go part is very hard. It is very hard. And that that's where I think a lot of people need help. I mean, that's that's what one of the areas I coach on. And, and, and I actually, not only do I coach people on that, but I get coached on that. I, I continuously like will do go through a, a breakthrough process when I realize something's holding me back. Um, a lot of, you know, the, the things that are holding us back came from, they came from the past. They could have come from something that happened when we were a child. They could have come from a generational trauma that happened you know, to our great grandparents and our body just carries that away and yeah. they're holding, they're stopping us. And, and the way you let go is you figure out what you didn't get that you needed. I mean, it's true. Like if you were a child and you felt like you didn't get the support, you didn't get what you needed, or, you know, you didn't get the recognition, whatever you didn't get that you needed. And you learn to recognize that I can give that to myself. You know, yeah. it's like if I can get love, say you're someone who you know, didn't get the love they wanted. It's like, well, I don't need someone else to give me love. I can love myself and give myself what I need. And once you give that to yourself, yeah. you let it go. if you didn't, if I didn't get, you know, whatever the case may be, maybe I felt like I was unworthy. Well, I don't, it doesn't matter what other people think. If I think I'm worthy, then I'm worthy and I can give that to myself. So yeah. I can let go of that feeling that I'm not good enough because I know I'm good enough and I've told myself that. So a lot of it is just knowing you know, it, that you have all the, we have all the power we need. We have everything we need or we know how to get it and we can give it to ourselves. And, and really yeah. that's the change in the mindset and that, you know, you are completely empowered to make your life what you want your life to be. And what other people think about you, it doesn't matter. What other people say about you, doesn't matter. And once you stop caring about that, it makes it a yeah. lot easier to kind of give yourself what you need. Oh yeah. That's, a, that's so true. That's so true. And I, I, you know, as long as you're confident in who you are, as long as you believe you, you know that you're this and you know that you're that, you know, you're not going to care so much about what other people think and what other people, you, you know, are, are, you know, you, kind of like focusing you, you know, worrying that, oh, you're, they're that, or they're this, and you're so worried about what their response is. Oh, you know, if they say this, this person might not like me and blah, 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 blah. You know, it, it doesn't matter as long as you believe in you, you know, that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. I tell a story in the book, um, you know, back when it's kind of funny when I, when I was a child, I, I was chubby and I had bad, my hair was short and it was kind of bad hair, <laughs> bad curly when all the hair was straight. I used to get straight A's and my maiden name was Tori. So my name was Lori Tori. So I would get, you know, I was a chubby, smart kid with bad hair and a rhymy name. I got picked <laughs> up. And I, you know, I, I, because of that, throughout my whole life, I had this self doubt, this wanting other people to like me, this really feeling like, you know, I'm not good enough, but I want other people to like me. And even, through everything I did, it still lingered. And and when I was in the middle of writing the book, I took my mom on a cruise to, and, and the night before the cruise, we stopped up and we stayed in Miami. And we stayed mm -hmm. at the South Beach Hotel and it was a beautiful hotel and it was very trendy. And it was a Friday night, you know, and I'm eight, I'm 60, my mom's 80. And, and yeah. we wanted to get a drink at the bar and I'm and looking around this hotel, I'm in my room and I'm like, I'm not pulling out everything in my suitcase and thinking like nothing, nothing looks nice enough for this bar. What bar? <laughs> I said to my, I was like, Lori, you know, you're, you're, you're 60 years old. You're a chemical engineer. You live in Texas. There's probably not an outfit in the world. That's going to make you fit in this trendy South beach bar with a bunch of 20 and 30 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> and you like and go have fun. And, and I, it's, I actually, I went down, we had a nice drink in the bar and then, um, I ended up sitting in the bar later on and I was taking notes because I wanted to write a little bit in my book. So I was taking notes and it was funny. There were all these people, you know, Friday night, beautiful people dressed up. 
And the bartender was like in his 20s. He was really cute. And he, he asked me what I was writing. I was like, oh, I'm writing a book. And I'm taking some notes. And he started to come over. He's really interested. And then a, a young couple next to me started asking questions and someone else. And suddenly I'm sitting in this beautiful, trendy bar. And I've got all these people that are like in their 20s and 30s looking at me and asking me questions. And it was like, oh, I, just, I felt so comfortable myself. And suddenly they're all like, acting like I'm the, I'm the important one. I'm the one. Right, it was right. Such a different experience because here I am worried about, oh, what am I going to wear? No one cared what I looked like. No one cared what I wore. But once I felt comfortable with myself, I was attractive for these other people to interact with and they wanted to hear what I right. had to say. So it just shows how you truly can change, you know, but when you change how you feel about yourself and you just let everything else go, people see you differently. Yeah. It's so true. It's, it, you know, once you, you are able to let it go and you, you learn, if, if you believe you change your mindset and then you work on making yourself, you know, who that person you want to be and, and you practice and you, you, you know, you create, you know, well, I want to be outgoing. So you start to, you know, work on those characteristics of being an outgoing person and, and you practice and you, you know, you learn how to change certain characteristics about yourself you know, you, you start to feel good about yourself as you start to change and, and then you start to develop more confidence and you start to make choices and you're not worrying so much about what everyone else is doing anymore. You're worrying, you're, you're happy with you. And that's what I think it, it all boils down to is that when you reinvent your mindset, you're really creating an inner happiness. That's going to really shine through. It seems. Yeah, that's for exactly. And it's just, it's such a positive cycle that the more it happens, the better it gets. And it just rolls off where you're not caring what people think about you anymore. And yet once you stop caring and you're happy being you, people are attracted to you and they want to be around you and they want to ask, you know, and they want to know what you know, because you're so confident and you're so comfortable that everyone wants that for themselves. Right, right. You know, I, I I think it's great what you're doing. And, and I want to hear more about your book. Tell me a little about your book, because I, I heard, you know, I heard bits and pieces about it, but it's so interesting because you talk about reinventing your mindset in the book. You know, that's what the book is about. And so I was wondering if you could tell us a little about it. Sure. Yeah, I wrote the book after I had, was fired and I was fired in a kind of a shocking, surprising way where it was totally unexpected. It was a horrible situation. And I I had always wanted to write a book and I never had time. And suddenly it was like, well, I have time and I'm going to write a book. And what I, at the time I wrote the book, I had, I had done a 5k charity race and the woman that, who formed the nonprofit, her name was Dominique was um, she had, when she was in her like late thirties, she came down with, she was diagnosed with MS and she was at the point where she had like, I think there are 30 possible symptoms of MS and she had like 29 of them. and oh, she wow. was in a wheelchair and she was in constant pain. And she just, you know, she, she really didn't want to live anymore. Mm -hmm. And she decided she had a vision one night in a dream where God came to her and said, you know, you have a mission and told her, you know, that she had to change her life. And she decided that she wasn't going to accept this to be the rest of her life. And she started doing research and tried nutrition and everything else. And she actually cured mo almost all the symptoms. Whereas now you see her, she's energetic, she's vibrant, she's running around. You would never know it was the same person. Wow. And it really inspired me. And I said, I want, you know, there are so many people that horrible things happen to them and they turn around and they do the most amazing things and they're really positive. And yet there are other people that, you know, something a little bad happens or they just spend their life being miserable and never, you know, they work a job they hate or they just don't want to change. So I wanted yeah. to see what the difference was. So I started interviewing people. I started interviewing the people who had the awful things happen to them and did amazing things. And I learned that they have a lot of things in common. And that's what kind of I wrote the book about, you know, what they had in common, as well as what my intuition was telling me to write. So yeah. funny, after I studied coaching, a lot of what I wrote, a lot of what I learned, it's like, oh, I already knew that because I put it in the book, but I, I didn't know where it came from. Right. So you know, those people that they, they believed in themselves, they believed it was possible. They, they, they knew they needed help. They, they all believed in some sort of a higher power whether it was God, whether it was the universe, but they knew that there was faith in something 
bigger than themselves and they needed community. So they had people around them they couldn't do it by themselves. Um, they all had a, a deep why, why they wanted to succeed. They wanted to help other people and they had like, you know, that why led to their mission. Yeah. And they had these fears that they had to face and overcome. And so I kind of took, you know, all that they learned and took stories from my life and things I had learned to overcome and put it together into a book that's, you know, part self-help book, part memoir, part inspirational book. Yeah. Um, very easy book to read. It's got, you know, some stories that are funny, some that might make you cry, but it's it's definitely an, kind of a storytelling book, not necessarily like one of these self-help books where you have to take a lot of notes. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I think sometimes I think storytelling is one of the most powerful therapies ever because you when you listen to other people's stories you realize you're not alone and you realize you you know through other people's stories you don't have to be your story doesn't have to be exact you know like theirs but if you could pull out like certain things that they, they said in their story and you could relate it to your life it really can be really powerful and impacting on your life you know you you know you learn from other people's stories you learn and it also empowers you because you're like wow this person can overcome it and move on with their life why can't i you know and and the fact that you know that there are more people around you that you know think and gone through similar situations you know we all come through with different walks of life but we all feel and think the same way, you know, and I think, I think sometimes just, just by, you know, interviewing people and listening to people's stories, I think it, it's so powerful and it can be so, it's so life-changing to other people's lives. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. It's definitely easy to connect with someone through a story and, and you see real outcomes. It's not like just, you know, what might happen. This really did happen. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now you have your book. Can you show everybody your book? Here's the book. The book is called The Reinvention Mindset by Lori McDowell. It is on Amazon. It's on barnesandnoble.com as well. And it's in a few bookstores, although it's a lot easier to find online. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you really wanted to summarize it and, and really point out a few important factors, what are some things you really like to emphasize to the listeners? I think the thing I'd really like to emphasize is that you have the power to do and be, you know, whoever you want, whatever you want, that you have everything inside of you. And it's really a matter of like making the choice, saying, I'm going to choose the direction of my life and just not putting it in someone else's hands, not really doing what you're supposed to do or what you think you have to do, but having that power of choice. And we all have the ability to, to do whatever we want. We all, you know, we're, we're all created with amazing capabilities inside of us and yeah. we have everything we need and we just need to find it. Right. Yeah. That's so true. That's so true. And, and you know, I think everyone has something within them that they can, you know, we all, like we were talking about earlier, we all carry those wonderful characteristics. We all have something wonderful about us. This is just that self-discovery that you were talking about, which is so important. Now, what type of services do you provide? Right. What I do is I, um, I do coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching, and I actually have some training programs. So I can do everything from, you know, one session for an hour to multiple sessions to a um, training program that, you know, I have a, an eight week training program that helps you basically what that does. It works for people who are coming from a corporate world and starting their own business or, or new in their own business. And it helps them get their mindset in the right place for, um, for success. And in my mm -hmm. coaching, I take people through like a breakthrough session where they basically learn they get to release everything that's holding them back. They get to over face their negative beliefs, their fears, their whatever, you know, figure out what the root cause is and, and get rid of that. And then right. from there, put together the plans and the inspired action and, a, and a goals that they can achieve. And we kind of help them get a process to achieve those goals. So those are the types of things. I also, I do speaking, um, keynote speaking, inspirational. I talk at conferences, so I'm available to talk. Um, I, I like to work, love to work with women, and especially I work with women who are, come from a corporate job, women who are technical engineers, scientists, because I can, you know, I can relate to them 
yeah. on the technical level as well. And then I help them learn to, you know, I think a lot of what we, we don't always use our whole brain. We were, especially when you're working in corporate, you're using, you know, the logical half of your brain and you're not paying any attention to the unconscious. And I help them get in touch with the unconscious mind and integrate the two. So, and that leads to lasting results. Yeah. And, and that's so important to do is, is to be able to connect the unconscious with the conscious. Cause a lot of times there is a lot of things that are going on with us are coming from the subconscious and we yeah. don't really realize that. And when we can tap into it and understand, you know, it could be a life-changing moment as well. It does. It makes everything. It's almost like when I, you know, after I started doing this work on myself, because everything I have to do with my clients, I've done to myself and I've been yeah. had done to me. And it, it's amazing how once you access both sides of your brain, like you become more efficient. Things you things that used to take you two hours may only take you an hour because you're actually, you know, it's almost like you're you're operating on parallel paths. And instead of being, you know, you used to be on the little side road and now you're working down the highway and it's just things are so, happen so much faster. True. Very true. Uh, you know, the, it, it's, it's so important. I think, you know, what you what you teach, because I, I think, I think everyone needs to really, because we change consistently as an individual, we're always changing, you know, and they say every seven years we, we tend to change also, but you know, it's, it's always good to keep on top of your, of, you know, your, your, your thoughts, your, your wants, your needs. And, and, you know, you, you, you should, you should be constantly reinventing your mindset and always looking to better in yourself and, and making yourself, you know, even more so, you know, and, and to do that, you really have to understand who you are and really understand, you know, like your self-discovery, really understand the inner self, your, your wants, your needs, your objectives in life, what you really, what really matters to you, what doesn't matter to you, you know, what are you looking to get out from life, you know, what makes you happy and, and, and really, you know, keeping that all maybe on, on in a little diary and then looking at yourself, you know, every once in a while and saying, am I on the right track or do I need to, you know, reinvent my, my mindset a little bit and change some things in my life, you know? Because, you know, we're all, we, we're, we're changing world, we're changing beings and, you know, change is just a, a normal part of our lives. Even though a lot of people don't like the word change, it's just inedible. It, you, you know, everybody changes. Right. Yeah, definitely. Change is, def is constant. It's the only thing that happened. And, and I, I love the fact that you mentioned how it's, it's a constant process because, yeah, the reinvention mindset and the reinvention, it's, it's not a destination. It, it's a journey. And yeah. it's definitely a straight line journey. I mean, it can, you know, it has detours. It can go up and down, up hills, down hills. You, you can have dead ends where you have to turn around and go back the other way. But it's a constant process. And, you know, you get to the place, you, you hit one goal and then it's not like, okay, I hit that goal, I'm done. It's like, okay, what's my next goal? What's my next day? So exactly. Like, we're always growing. We're always changing. And, you know, we, but we can't, but that's the thing. We have to accept that we can, it's okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you've got a college degree in this, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter if you've done this job for 30 years, you could do something completely different. You can yes. do whatever it is that really, you know, fulfills you. And I mean, I think the, the world is a joyful place and it's, there's so many opportunities and possibilities and we should be free to explore all of them. Yes. Oh, hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now, if people wanted to contact you, where would they go to find you? Yeah. Um, you, my email is L McDowell, M C D O W E L L at reimagine you, the letter U dot net reimagine you strategies to the company. So I also have the webpage is reimagine you dot net. And then if you're interested in talking, you can just go, my calendar link is very simple. It's book Lori, L O R I dot com. So if you want to go on book dot com, you can book an appointment email is great i'm also i'm on facebook i'm in linkedin um you can you know instagram reach me on any of those but email is easy and like i said or you can contact me through the website i love it i love it this has been an amazing discussion today and i think you you provided such um wonderful information you know i think it's so important to to go over, you know, what we talked about, because a lot of people, like I said earlier in the conversation, you know, people don't realize that change is possible and that we don't have to settle for, for who we are and, and what we have, you know, we can change our mindset and reinvent ourselves at any time at any given day.
Yes. Yeah, I think it's so important. You can, you can, you know, you can do that at any time. You you have the power to be who and what you want to be, who or what you want to be. You can change at any time. And it's a matter of, you know, knowing what it is you want, knowing yourself, believing it happens, letting go of what's holding you back, and then just getting started. Yes, a hundred percent. I got to tell you, this has been a wonderful discussion today, Laurie, and I'm so glad you came on the show today to talk about this because you've been such an inspiration. You really have, you know, people, you know, just like your, your sign says, faith does not make anything easy. It makes it possible. So, you know, and that's so true. That's so true. And, you know, I think what you, you talked about today was, was wonderful because people have to realize that and anything is possible. Anything is possible. We just, we can reinvent ourselves at any given time and that people shouldn't settle. And, and you, you made, you made a very good, you know, point today and you gave such great tools and techniques and, and strategies on how to get started. So I just want to thank you so much for sharing all the information and, and, and your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stacey. I really enjoyed the conversation as well. And thank you for giving me this forum to have this conversation, share this information. Oh, you're very welcome. And thank you. And I can't wait to see you soon. I look forward to it. Thanks. So everybody remember that Lori has her own podcast. So you can see her anytime you just go and you type her name in and you'll see her on any platform. And if you like this episode, don't forget to like and comment and share and follow us. So you'll see more episodes in the near future. So everybody have a great day. And thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.